Good morning, I'm Kimberly. Thank you for joining our morning prayers today on Friday the 16th of July. Today we'll be looking at Psalm 144 and today's scripture reading is taken from Acts 25 verses 13 to 17. So let's begin. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let your glorious light shine upon us today. And now it's time for our prayer of thanksgiving. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of your salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and shall forever be. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And now we move on to today's chosen psalm, Psalm 144. Blessed be the rock who teaches my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my steadfast help and my fortress, my stronghold and my delivery. My shield in whom I trust, who subdues the peoples under me. O oh Lord, what are mortals that you should consider them, mere human beings that you should take thought for them? They are like a breath of wind, their days pass away like a shadow. Bow your heavens, O oh Lord, and come down, touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast down your lightnings and scatter them, shoot out your arrows and let thunder roar. Reach down your hand from on high, deliver me and take me out the great waters from the hand of foreign enemies, whose mouth speaks wickedness and the right hand is the hand of falsehood. O oh God, I will sing to you a new song. I will play to you on a ten-stringed harp. You that give salvation to kings and have delivered David your servant, save me from the peril of the sword and deliver me from the hand of foreign enemies so that our sons in their youth may be like you, well-nurtured plants, and our daughters like pillars carved from the corners of the temple. Our barns be filled with all manner of store, our flocks bearing thousands and ten thousands in our fields. Our cattle be heavy with young, may there be no miscarriage or untimely birth, no cry of distress in our streets. Happy are the people whose blessing this is. Happy are the people who have the Lord their Father God a wonderful psalm, saying we are happy because we carry the Lord our God in our hearts. God deliver us, stir our weak wills, revive our well weary spirits and give us the courage to strive for the freedom of all your children to the praise of your glorious name. Glory to the Father, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and shall be forever. Amen. And today's scripture reading is taken from Acts 25, verses 13 to 17. A few days later, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived to pay their respects to Festus. Since they were spending many days there, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. He said, There is a man here whom Felix left as a prisoner. When I went to Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and asked that he be condemned. I told them that is not Roman custom to hand over anyone before they have faced their accusers and have had an opportunity to defend themselves against the charges. When they came here with me, I did not delay the case, but convened the court the next day and ordered the man to be brought in. When his accusers got up to speak, they did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected. Instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion 
and about a dead man named Jesus who Paul claimed was alive. This time, not so much a trial as a personal interview for Paul before Festus, the new Roman governor, and Agrippa, the Jewish puppet king, and Bernice, his wife. In this constant toing and froing between Paul and the Jews and the Romans, it looks as if Paul is a helpless victim. Look a bit closer, however, and we begin to see his resolve, his strength and his resilience. It's as if Paul has got a deep inner conviction which enables him to withstand the constant harassment. In the middle of it all, we discover what is. A certain Jesus who has died, but who Paul asserted to be alive. The alive Jesus is with Paul, is in Paul, and is before Paul. So what are the pressures and struggles that you are and I are facing today? And how much are we all allowing the alive Jesus to be with us and in us? Is he your inner resolve, your inner strength, your inner resilience? Dear Lord Jesus, just like Paul, help me to assert to you that you are alive. Quieten me that I might feel your aliveness. Give me time and space that I might be more aware of you, the living one. Open my heart and mind that your aliveness might flow through me. Amen. And now I move on to the Gospel Canticle. I'm going to say the Benedictus. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to us, his people, and set them free. He has raised us up for mighty Saviour born by the house of his servant David. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteousness in his sight of all the days of our lives to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now it's time for our prayers of intercession. So let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for those we love and live with, for our neighbours and friends, especially those who have heard the good news of your forgiving and renewing love, but have not been able to take it in or have rejected it. We pray for the opening of ears and eyes and that your saving power will sow the world of love in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those in any kind of need, in body, mind or spirit. Surround with love all are having difficulties in their relationships, those feeling betrayed or neglected, for marriage breakdowns, for children of broken homes or homes with hatred or violence. We pray for those in daily pain, overwhelmed with the struggle of coping, for those who have been given a diagnosis that feels like a life sentence. We think of all those who have been asked to pray for, and we name them before you now, Lord, in a moment of silence. Fill them with your healing and surround them all with your everlasting arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our environment, giving thanks for the local parks and green spaces so important for our mental health and well-being, especially those used as places for quiet meditation and prayer. We give thanks for those who tend to churchyards, encourage conservation, for those who plant trees and open their gardens for others to enjoy. Show us ways we can help all to enhance the beauty of our surroundings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our parish St Wilfrid's, for our leaders who continue to provide, provide spiritual guidance and very many other forms to help us. We pray especially for everyone who organises leads or assists in church activities and children's work and for the wise decisions that we make as we come out of lockdown, making the gospel accessible to all in our community. We pray for Robin as he leaves at the end of the month and for Rob who starts his new journey with us in August. May you guide them and shine your light upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Gracious God, as we go out into this coming week, may we be aware of your love and support in all we do as we faithfully live out the gospel. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The collet of the day is now said. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who you love such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which succeed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer we say together, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our morning prayer has come to an end for today. Go in peace and let God's light shine upon each and every one of you. I look forward to joining you in morning prayer again next week. Take care.